Welcome back, dear friends. A joy to speak with you again. Thanks for all your continuing support with ideas and support with all this. That's great. I apologise for the croakiness and the odd cough. Right, on to making things more permanent, because we've done all this modelling and it's doing my noggin in. On and on and on. And let me show you. If you remember last time, I was working on this ratchet system so that every time the big pendulum swung to the left and right as the coin lifting, ball lifting mechanism was dropping it would pull this patterns and folds which would turn this ratchet which could then turn the hands on the scoring clock system thing Oh I hear you cry, what a tidy extension Well yes One of the benefits of having your wife's 50th karaoke disco inferno party in the workshop is you end up with it all lovely and tidy with so much space you don't know what to do with but I'm sure I'm going to solve the issue fairly soon so that was a nice little segue wasn't it here's the drawing that I sketched out this morning I'm just planning how I'm going to all the different levels that all these gears are going on now I've sort of established vaguely hopefully fingers crossed that I've got the theory sorted out um, so I've got all this and I've drawn a couple of things out on the um, computer two basic supports one for the back with a bearing in it because that's got to support the weight of that big pendulum at the back um, which is important and a load of other holes for all sorts of other things I and mean, there's a little sort of idea that this is all going to go between these two supports and then in front of this which will look lovely will be a series of gears um, to work the scoring system a sort of big clock face thing so that's the current plan Stan I'm going to drill out to these holes because as always I've made them smaller than they need to be um, so that they basically act as centres for drilling them out with nice drill bits to make sure that they're vertical all the way through rather than with a draft angle like you get with the laser cutter I'm pleased with these bits because I realised I had these offcuts left over from cutting out loads of um, reciprocating chronometer kits these little bits up the side which were 35 mm hence 35 mm and hence the fact the laser cutter is now cutting out two bases that these bits will hopefully slot into I thank you this is what I'm talking about so that should just push down look at that well, amazing fantastic so that's going to be the base and then because I needed an extra bit because this bit if you remember the um, scoring ratchet thing I wasn't happy with it there because I needed more weight to pull the ratchets in the sorry the pulls against it um, ended up sticking bits of lead on things oh I've touched it again there goes my mind um, so I thought I'd move it somewhere over here so I've got gravity um, pushing the two focus pushing the two pulls down hence the fact beep, 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 beep. I've got two of these cut out that glue cunningly to a little notch here so that's nice so we'll get that glued together another day and these are glued together nicely with a couple of bearings in I added this with the bearings at the bottom to support the weight of this um, the main ball chain pulley thing so now I'm just going to video it to remind myself in case I forget how it all goes together that will do nicely and we're off I'm just going through each part of the mechanism starting at the bottom with the chain ball thing um, improving it putting into place um, the improvements that I've realized are necessary there it is on the plan Stan how many parts it's incredible every thickness of plastic as well let's get that assembled oh what fun despite having planned it as carefully as possible well not planned it whole point of this project but even these little micro bits um, I realize of course I don't need four screws because I've glued these two sides together for the pulley and I just need two screw threaded holes for the little magnet things, the magnets take ages to glue in properly, so that's why they're sitting there. So I've started to, oh, and there's the that's what I mean by linking it all together. So that's nice. And there's room, I don't know, 
I have no idea what I'm talking about. But here are the bits for the um, escapement, which is the next level up. So these bits, and then I'm working on not that bit, just that bit. This is definitely the way to do it with this lovely simple jig. So simple, but it's lovely. Drill out all the centres that the laser cut a smaller hole with to 4.1 millimetres diameter. That then just happily pushes onto a 4 mil that's slightly over because it's chromium plated. Glue everything together, and then this one's got grub screws, and, and it just worked perfectly every time for all these different bits and pieces. I'm still waiting. I'll put another drip of super glue on the end of each of the magnets just to make sure they're properly sealed in. So I'll get on with this bit now whilst waiting. I've glued them together so that the higher bits, the thicker bits, are near the middle. So it's got a sort of camber. And then on the bit that it engages with, I've glued them together so that the wider bits are on the outside so they should mesh properly. And this is what I'm doing with all the bits and pieces that have to precisely mesh with this mechanism. So that's why I've cut the escapement out of two pieces of two millimetre thick acrylic which I'm gluing together just to make sure that all the edges that pair on each other are as precise as possible. And I've got two this time just because the force on it so they're working together. So that's nice. Now if I remove that, the idea is this goes on there instead. There we are. That's lovely. So now the ratchet is linked directly to the um, 60 tooth gears that are going to transfer the power to the um, escapement. Let's see if we can get this installed. Now I've got this worked out, I now know how deep or the gap that needs to be between the front and the back supports. Right, we have the two halves, we have the bottom bit mounted, let's see. Oh, spinny things. Look, the ratchet works beautifully. I'm sorry this isn't clear, it'd look lovely if it was all painted brass and things, but obviously I'm not going to waste, potentially waste time doing all that until I know it all works, but that's, oh, with the two little bearings as well, that's, that's an absolute joy. Right, let's get the, um, here we are, look. To make sure it doesn't take up too much room, I've glued the end of the shaft in there. That's the useful thing about planning it like this, what bits need to go through further and not so far. So there's that, and there's the 20 tooth pulley, which I have dutifully drilled, tapped and put two rub screws in. Dog walked, filled with joys of spring. I've made a spacer because I noticed these were all going out too far and squashing bits. So now look with that in there. Oh, I love spinny things, as you know. Spinny, clicky things. Look at that. Oh, what an absolute joy. There are the bits for the pendulum and escapement. And here, some lead. Oh, lead. And I thought, rather than cut it with a pair of shears or snips, I'm just going to use a Stanley knife, because it's so soft. And I'm just using one of these ones to mark it up. I'm just going to cut a load of squares and then work out how many I need to fix. I think I'm going to have to another, print another one of these with threaded holes underneath so I can actually screw the lead to it. Ooh, oh, Cantona. Look at that. Beautiful bit of brass turned down because the top bit, the escapement, has got its own bearing now. In fact, a system of bearings, because that has to be free to move, so it's got its own one. There's a nice big one in that, in the back of the um, support, because it's got to support the weight of the pendulum. And then it comes from, because all the mass and forces are on this back one, the front one's just another hole. So that we have the mounted lever, it's attached to the pendulum that's going to pull the ratchet round. And you just know when something is wrong. So... I think I need to have the two ratchets, well, sorry, pulls. I always get them the wrong way round. This is how I've been designing all this arcade machine, which is lovely. I, don't, I haven't done it before, I like this, but just drawing each little bit. So here's the um, new ratchet mechanism, two lots of three, the outside bit, two lots of two. Always make these holes a millimetre larger so that you don't have to line them up too precisely. Make a feature of them, I say. Bits to be tapped. And the lever, and this is all part of, if I click on all, 
There we are. So that's the top bit, the first level of things, and then that, and then the, the escapement, and then the other bits, and just slowly building up all of the designs and those bits. It's so useful having it like this, because if I'm building something, like I've just done with this um, lever, I think, no, nah, that's not quite right. Just come in, make a few alterations, and Bob is your uncle. Lines and lines and lines. I don't have very much of an idea of what I'm doing, but the idea is there's that bit. That's going to be there. That has to be lighter, obviously, because I want that gravity to keep pulling that against it. And I think I've got it in the right position where it's at 90 degrees to how it's going to move, so it doesn't have to sort of uncatch itself. It should be able to just come vertically. Who knows? And there we have it, the bits for the ratchet. Well, that was a good guess. Perfect. You can see that second ratchet, that one, Paul, sorry. <laughs> good old Paul. Um, he's stopping that from returning. So now to add a counterweight to here to simulate the next bit of the mechanism, the rewind bits, that if I lift that, and I need to sort out why that lifting that, then it, it will fly whiz round back to the starting point. A frustration, you say? Yes, I answer or reply. Ah, oh, this video was meant to have been edited last week. Um, and I'd already got, I think, about 40 minutes of video that needed to be edited down to about 20. And I'd done that, and I thought, this is just getting really monotonous and boring. It's just someone banging their head against the wall. Everyone likes failure, don't get me wrong. But 20 minutes of it. So well, I've cut that down, I think it's about 16 minutes. And I'm just now going to explain the next steps, which I hope to include in this, but obviously can't. Um, that'll have to be for the next video if I'm still functioning properly. So let me show you where we're at to at the moment. We've got all that and we've got the spindle and I can't remember what I've talked about, where we are, but never mind, forgive me if I'm repeating myself. That at the moment, that's going to work the um, counter, the scoring system, and at the moment I've just got one, well I'm going to need gears, I've just got that one ratchet with a counterweight to represent being able to return to zero. And I've added up here stops for the two levers. And in fact, I've added a lever for this back bit that allows it to freewheel, so to speak. So let's just give that a go. Ignore that, we don't talk about that. So I lift the handle. This is counting round, which will do the scoring, and that's also winding up this. And it's easy to take things for granted, but this is actually now working properly. Now if I push this lever down, oh, keep it down, look at that. So that works beautifully, and that's now dropped back to the bottom. And then if I start it moving again, the little pin at the back drops back down to link the two together. And this is lovely because having this set up with a proper lever, and I realised of course that the string that pulls the little pin up, if that makes any sense, can go through a hole in the centre. I was trying to arm and arm with pulleys and other ways, but that works really nicely into a little lever. And the great thing is, as I say, that adjusts how high it goes. So I now know exactly how much that has to pull. Oh, the other thing is, once, as you put a new coin in, this lever will be pulled down. And then that will be, you see the effect when it returns to zero. That's the scoring system. That's <laughs> something else I've got to do. Now, this nasty little thing. It shouldn't be, because look, you lift this up, and there'll be the two sliders ro rolling things down here for the balls to roll down. And look, as it comes down, perfect. The two springs in here, um, the balls can roll in, although they don't. I cannot get a ball to roll into here. It's a little lip, I'll put it higher, it won't go in. I'm going to have to redesign that. It's really frustrating. It's just yet another really frustrating thing. Then, um, I got hold of some of the 20 millimeter conduit, electrical conduit, which is perfect because it is just over, I think it's 17 millimeters um, diameter or whatever it is, the ball rolls down. So I'm experimenting now because 
So I say, if the ball rolls down to go out, or the ball rolls down for another turn, it's, it needs to pull something to pull this lever. Oh. And I think I've got there, I'm, as I've said on numerous occasions, I'm not building too much until I've expressed, oh here's the ball. So let's just try this, so, lift this up. And you can see the principle, you can see the principle, there's that. Comes down to here, let's put the ball in. And it slowly releases. So it sort of works. Now, the thing is, I hate this sort of the mechanisms and stuff. I'm so sick of having to rely on the mass or the weight or whatever of one thing. Because you move, you make the lever more efficient or less efficient or whatever else, it doesn't matter because you'd make a change here and then that affects the change somewhere else. So what I'm going to have to do is to build a proper version of this with a proper hinge that fits in the bottom of the machine that I can adjust the height of this and I can adjust the position of the whatever it is and the angle of that angle because obviously they need to end up level ready to tip the ball into the coin lifter thing and I need to adjust the length of this and I need some sort of thing, this is all lead to basically overcome, counterbalance the weight of the two black tubes so some sort of adjustable thing there I mean one thing that has become very very apparent with this sort of mechanical device is that you just need tons of opportunities to adjust everything Otherwise, you're just going to end up making more and more stuff. So, thank you very much for watching, if you still are. Um, thank you for all your continued ideas and suggestions. It's over a week now. Keep them coming in. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. That's right, I nearly forgot. Um, the scoring system. I'd love some ideas for what you think the dials should be like. Someone suggested leaving them um, from 0 to 12, like a clock face. And then on the 10s, it wouldn't be 10s, it would be 12s, it would be sort of 12, 24, 6, 48. Which is an interesting idea. Don't know what people feel about that. I'm erring on the side of sticking to the decimal, so 0 to 9 on the main dial. You can't see my hand demonstrating. There it is demonstrating. 0 to 9 on the main dial, and then 0, 10, 23 on the small dial. The thing is, I've just got to have some belief in my ability that this actually might work without having to build 10 more of everything. I've watched some other YouTube videos of people who are building the most amazing machines and they face endless problems that go on for weeks. I don't know how they do it. So there is a precedent for banging your head against the wall and just tenaciously keep on going. You know, I was thinking I could suddenly discover that the ball isn't heavy enough and I should have gone for a much larger ball and then I'd have to redesign everything. It's things like that. Anyway, fingers crossed. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you next time when everything will be working beautifully like a dream. Yes. Oh, and remember to click subscribe and like and stuff. Thanks again.